Dude, TBH, our set looks pretty good. Like, for how quick we put it together? Yeah. I guess we'll chat at the beginning of it. Wait for people to come in. <laughs> All right. We are live. Probably should just mingle in the beginning or just have the that screen. We're having some. Oh, no, we're live. Cool. All right. Sorry for technical difficulty, everybody. This is College of Christianity. My name is Christian. And that's this. My name is Hank. And, and uh, I graduated from Cal Poly in 2018. And nowadays I do programming and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, um, alumni as well. And uh, yeah, it's been great. So what do you do for like, mechanical engineering now? Like, well, um, actually, I work on bikes. Um, it's a pretty niche market. I, I, I make aftermarket accessories for Harley Davidson motorcycles, like exhausts, racks, like, things like that. I feel like it's like the dream for every mechanical engineer. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been great. I, I love it. But yeah. Yeah. What, what do you do? Uh, well, I work for like a Bauta company. I think we do software. But anyways, so this podcast is, or stream, I guess, is um, kind of like a, a thought, an idea that we had because we heard how how much COVID school kind of sucks right now, like online classes and that kind of thing. And so we're thinking about the people at home, like a lot of the Christians at home who kind of don't have a, a community or they're just kind of like feeling like they're just kind of despairing right now, you know? Yeah. So we wanted to talk about like our experiences at college, what worked for us, what didn't. Um, and maybe like hopefully, you know, help some of you guys out there. So, Yeah. Um, as for the title, I don't know. It's the best thing I could think of. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we, how do we like start like knowing each other? Like, how do I, you know, I we... think the, the, the first time we met was over a slice of pizza, Costco pizza. Yeah. The exact. Okay. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you, you actually treated me. So that was nice. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've known each other for five years now. Yep, five years. Yeah. yeah, my freshman year, and then I think you think you were a sophomore at the time. I was yeah? a sophomore. Yeah, I can tell Paul when you actually meet in person. I know. Imagine back that. in the good old days. Good old days. Back in back in our day. Yeah, and I think that alludes to what we're gonna talk about today is like basically the answer to how to stay Christian in college is is community, a uni community, essentially. Yeah. So, um, wanted to ask, ask you, Hank. Yeah. What was your story? As a Christian in college, what was that like for you? Mm. You know, when I first entered college, I had a really, really shaky uh, faith. Um, you know, I was kind of in a state where I didn't really believe in the existence of God at all. Yeah, and I had no, I had no Christians that I could actually confide in. So, um, you know, actually, um, you know, I knew people who were Christian, but I didn't really, you know, talk. I knew you at the mm. time, but I feel like. Yeah. You know, when we first met each other, I didn't know you that well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I mostly kept that to myself. And um, yeah, I think I had a really shaky start to college where I wouldn't even really consider myself Christian because I, I was constantly debating if my faith was even real, you know? So, what, what kind of like debates were you having with yourself? Like, what kind of thoughts were you thinking about? Well, I think I was, you know, thinking a lot about the implications of faith. Yeah. Um, I was struggling with that cause I knew that my life trajectory from college was going to be a lot different, you know, yeah. based on whether or not I was Christian or not. Right. So I knew it was an important question to answer and I did everything I could to answer the question of God's existence. And, yeah. um, you know, I was struggling, you know, I, I remember looking up YouTube debates and everything, but, um, yeah, it's just a shame that I never had yeah. anyone I could really trust to really talk about in person right. at that point in my life, which yeah. left me in this kind of limbo state for yeah. like 
uh, like a year like a long time because because what it sounds like is like no matter how much youtube you watch yeah, yeah, yeah like it didn't really help you figure out what you're thinking about not really yeah. no yeah i guess not huh but how did you actually come to those answers like what at what point did you like consider the questions answered hmm, that would be probably my the end of my sophomore year sophomore year um so it did take a little while it took a while yeah um and uh i did join a christian club in that time yeah so i think that helped a lot um i think joining the club helped me persevere being around other christians you know because i think at some points i just wanted to give up and just throw my hands up and say i have no idea and just yeah. live my life the way i wanted yeah but i think being around other christians kind of kept me going like made me realize this is something worth answering, I guess. Because mm. I saw how it changed even your life. You know, I saw you, you're a little bit older than me, and I saw you yeah. mature. And I saw, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of people in our group, you know, grow and their lives be changed. And mm. so I knew this was something worth answering, you know. So that, that, that was one thing that was really good. And mm. I think just long, mulling it over long enough, right. eventually I came to the answers that I needed, so. I think that's true. I mean, looking back, like you talked about like me growing and you growing as well, like in the same group, because we yeah. went to the same group in college. Like the whole reason why is because we had like older people kind of like modeling out like what it had meant to be a Christian. Yeah. Like they figured it out. Yeah. Already kind of thing. So it's like, then it's like, of course it's easy to figure out or to like watch them and be like, oh, so that's what it looks like to be a Christian, right? Yeah. Like, especially in college, right? It's a bit, it's a different context. Because sure, there's like, if you live in a Christian family, like maybe your dad, you look up to him and he's like mm -hmm. a really cool dude. He's a really strong Christian. Right. He does all the things that people would say, like, he looks like a Christian guy. Mm -hmm. But then because he's in a different context than you are, it's a little more difficult, I think. Yeah. Maybe to relate to that. Yeah. Because one of the dudes that I, I looked up to in college was a dude named Tony. And he was, he's actually four years older than me. He graduated from college as soon as I get caught into college. Yeah. Yeah, but then he was like an older brother to me. He's like, it's mm -hmm. my dude. Yeah. You know? So I really looked at him. Like, I kind of try to be like him a lot. <laughs> hey, Tony yeah. was a cool guy. Tony's super cool, dude. He's like the coolest guy ever. He got yeah. married recently, so congrats to him. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's one aspect of it, I think. Like, having someone older than you and having people around you mm. who kind of... Like, you're all doing the same thing together, is how I put it. Yeah. Right. The way yeah. I kind of, like, the one thing I appreciate is that it gives you a vision of a life that once you see it, you yeah. want to live it, you know? Yeah. And I think before you see someone else live it, you don't really know what it is exactly. Huh. You know, you don't really know what Christian life for a young man in college looks like. Right. You know, because, yeah, kind of like what you mentioned, you know, like, my dad was a Christian, but, you know, he was a father, he owned a house, you know, he had, he was working every day. I'd never really worked in my life. You know, his life was so much different. So like an appealing vision of Christian life yeah. for me was, it was more effective to see it lived out in these younger guys, mm. you know, mm. um, it really helped me kind of catch that and be like, wow, you know, it'd be great to live that way. You know? Yeah. What were the guys around you when you were in college? Who were those guys? You know, I think, uh, definitely, Guys my age, you know, yeah. you, you, Albert, yeah, uh, Albert, you know, all those guys and, um, you know, definitely um, the younger staff. So we have, we have some, some guys who stuck out, uh, stuck around at our club and kind of helped out after college, uh, yeah. some, some kind of, uh, you know, college graduates and yeah. um, kind of seeing how they, you know, made decisions in their lives and kind of gave an inspiring picture of life after mm -hmm. college that, you know, was, it was different than, um, I guess a lot of other visions that people give you like, Oh, you know, like life is all about making money. And none of those visions really, really seem that appealing to me, you know, oh, but they, yeah, they yeah. gave an alternate kind of view and a different lifestyle that I saw in their lives. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was just uh, a breath of fresh air, I guess is the best way to put it. Small tangent, but why yeah. was not making money? <laughs> to you? Oh man, we're going to open this can <laughs> of worms. You know, actually it's funny. I, this actually happened. You okay. don't know about this. No, but today, I don't. Wait. Yeah. I was talking with my coworker. Okay. And um Was it what was his name again? It was Frank. No. No, no, Zach. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, Frank is my manager. But yeah, yeah. um yeah, so 
so I was talking with him and, um, you know, he, he's a great guy. I love working with him, but he's like, you know, Hank, like some days I just work, it just, life just feels so repetitive. Like I get up, yeah. I go to work, I make money, I go to bed, I get up, I go to work, I make money, I go to bed. And you know, he's like, there's lots of things that I enjoy doing and there's lots of little things I find joy in, right. but sometimes, you, you know, it's like, it just feels like life can get so like, what, why am I doing what I'm doing? Like what, what, said that. what am I working toward? Yeah. It was an amazing kind of moment and it was, it was pretty cool. Were you guys just like working on something and he just turned to you and like, it, you, know, you know, Hank, I life, <laughs> you work and then you die. <laughs> Is that what he... You know, I think it was cause it was early in the morning. <laughs> And, you know, yeah, I, I think all of us are a little nihilist in the morning, you know, yeah. like, why, why do I live? You know? Yeah, that's true. All of us kind of feel, feel that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. How old is, how old is Zach? You know, he's around my, he's like 28. Um, he's pretty young. He's pretty young. He has a lot of, you know, I mean, we both have a lot of life to live. Yeah. But I, I can totally identify with that too. Like, um, I mean, it, I think even though I wasn't working at the time, I'm like, man, why am I in college? Like, what is my life going to end at? Like, right. what what is it working towards? And I, money is great for a time for 80 years, I guess, or however long you live. Right. But, you know, it's like why I pour all, like I pour all my life into this yeah. thing, into my interests and my hobbies. But if it all just ends the same way, it's like, yeah. you know, what, you know, what's the point, I guess, you know, it, I think that's why none of these visions that people give me, they were never complete. You know, they yeah. always had, something missing. And that was like, I guess like yeah. the ultimate kind of like yeah. trajectory, but yeah, that, I mean, that, that's, that's a that, big can of worms right that, there. That for reminds sure. me recently. I, um, I, I was looking on YouTube recently, just being the trending stuff, whatever. There's this dude who like spent a year out. In, he's an, he's like a Swedish dude. Yeah. Spent a year building a log cabin. Just cause, I guess, cause he he wanted to. Or it was. It sounds dream. like a lot of fun, actually. It, actually, it seemed, it seemed pretty cool. It was his dream, but it's like, it's kind of like that. I think people are just kind of looking for like something to give a meaning, purpose, mm. that kind of thing. But if I were to bring this back to, like, what we were talking about earlier, I guess, yeah. it's like, if you have everybody in your group, like the people you know, your friends, your close friends, kind of thing, they're all heading towards the same thing in life, like. If you guys are all out to make money, like if yeah, you're yeah. all our, out to make that four, Fortune 500, get the IPO, yeah. I don't know, right? Like you guys will all be like, you guys will all be in together. Yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. Like same with like anything, right? If it's like, um, you can bond over a lot of different things. If you, you play the same game. Yeah, yeah. Um, Basketball. Yeah, totally. Watch. Yeah. That's even a thing anymore. Smash, you know? <laughs> like if, you're, okay, so this is something in my, I always, somebody, um, like one of my mentors told me, always remember this, is that your relationships are only as strong as the foundation that you built them on. Oh, interesting. Your relationships are only as strong as the foundation that mm -hmm. you build them on. So if your foundation is smash, if yeah, your yeah. foundation is a log cabin in the woods, <laughs> I guess, then it's yeah. like, then, yeah, that's, your relationship will last as long as that thing is there. Or as long as you're interested in that thing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like your high school friends, like you don't, yeah. Like I don't, I don't ever talk to my high school friends ever. I don't. Me neither. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Absolutely no, not, right? Because no. like you're not in high school together anymore. But if your relationship is built on something that's solid and kind of lasts, I guess. Yeah. Like for example, like being a Christian. Which yeah. You can't really take away, right? <laughs> then, yeah. Hopefully that's a commitment, right? I hope. Yeah. 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 <laughs> something that will last. Yeah. yeah. Right. But so if it's on something that's solid, then it's gonna last mm. as long as that thing is there. Right. So. I think, yeah, like if we, we had groups of guys, our friend groups in college, like the guys that we stuck with and had, like we saw the worst of them and the best of them. Mm -hmm. Like we all wanted to do very similar things. Like we wanted to live out what it meant to be a Christian. Mm. And that's why we're still living together. Yeah. While we're doing this thing, right? So that's right. Right. So yeah. That's breaking, the, breaking the fourth wall there. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that, that's an interesting point. I, you know, like I had a pretty tight knit group of friends in high school and we played a, I, we spent a lot of time together. I was homeschooled for a couple of years. And yeah. during those two years I gamed like. You were like, what was your KD on, on the battlefield? Oh, I actually, I used to take, I still take some pride in this. <laughs> my KD was like four point something and my yeah. win loss ratio was 75%. 
I don't really know what that means, but you know, for anyone, any Battlefield Four fans out there, that's I did play on console. Sure. But anyway, the point is, I played a lot of games, and I had a like a you know a group. We you know we all played together, but yeah, you know, as the day that I gave up gaming, you know, just just for a person, you know, just to have more time and to get things done, and I didn't want to fail college, just so because you have to drive to work early in the morning, and your coworkers that too. On you cause oh my gosh, like five minutes late. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah that that that's an interesting story. <laughs> But actually, I, I gave it up in college because yeah. my parents didn't let me bring it to college because they didn't want me to fail all my classes because, uh, you know, that that's wisdom right there because I, yeah. I was uh, gaming a lot. So yeah. anyway, as soon as I gaming was out of my life, those friendships crumbled, you know. Right. So I guess so we were talking about, you know, what do you base your foundation on? So we, we were right. talking about how, you know, f- like having christianity at the basis but how do you keep christianity right. as your basis yeah especially in college when you're given so many different um vi- visions right because mm-hmm. in college people are like oh pursue career pursue uh pursue your interests, pursue this or that right. how do you stay true to christianity in the midst of all that hmm. you know it's a good question i think that has a lot to do with like just you know, since th- we are talking to Christians here, we're just going to use the Christian words, right? Yeah. Like, well, stop sinning. <laughs> I think that's a big one. If, if you want to stay, like... Easier said than done. It's right. Like, 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 if you're trying to stay committed to Christ, right, the, then it goes to say, like, stop grievous, like, blatantly singing, sinning all the time, right? Not yeah. singing, sorry. Sinning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like... I say this like how would I describe sin? I would say sin to define that would be like m- doing whatever you want, mm. and like regardless of repercussions, you're just kind of doing what you think is best for your life. Right. But like, of course, that sounds pretty good sometimes. But then, like, have a little more sophisticated look on that and see like when you make decisions about life, you are not always going to be correct. Mm. You know. So I'm not saying that like. Um, if I were to pick up this laptop, that's like sin because I'm, I'm. It's because I wanted to do that or something. Right, like that. right, right. But it's like because I've chosen for myself what is good and bad, instead mm. of saying, "God, I'm gonna let you decide what's good and bad." Mm. I think. Then I think that's that's essentially at the heart of what sin is. Mm. That's like at the core of it, and then everything out of that is like is what we see, right? It's like because I'm stealing something or because I'm killing somebody, it's because I thought it was the best thing to do. Right, right. So that's the heart behind it. So. When you have a group of guys around you, like then that's a lot of like accountability, because hmm. then of your your self will to prevent yourself from doing the things you don't want to do is pretty weak. I yeah, think yeah, in yeah. I think I think everybody kind of recognizes that. Yeah. But it's like you tell you ask your friend like like bro, dude, I'm having a big problem of like I don't know like stealing your money or something. I'm trying to think of that example. Like I'm I'm bad problem with like. Academic money. dishonesty. Uh, yeah, I cheat. I cheat yeah. all the time on my test, man. Yeah, yeah. It's bad. You know, I'm looking at the test answers on like Spark Notes all the time. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. my online final. Yeah, yeah. I hope that's relevant for you guys. <laughs> like, hey, man, it's tempting. I know. I know. Like, you have it right there, right? And I, I heard recently from one of the student dudes. Yeah. That like they just have a group chat on Group Me. Like, oh, going yeah, on. yeah, that's, yeah. And like he's like, dude, I don't want to participate, but then like everybody's just throwing answers on there. Yeah. Final. It's like that. Right. Yeah. So if you have like a dude looking over your shoulder who's your friend, and mm. you give him the permission to say, like, dude, stop that, mm. then you you as a community, as a church, church community, mm. stops say or at least fighting against sin together. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that you said a friend who has the permission yeah. to speak to you. Yeah. Right. Because my experience with friends growing up is we never really like chastise each other, you know? Mm. Like we never, I mean, I guess if we did something wrong to each other, yeah. you know, like if I, I don't know, did something wrong to my friend, he, he might talk to me about it or like, Hey dude, that's not cool. Yeah. But if I did something just wrong that didn't affect him, yeah, I don't think any of my friends would have called me out on it. Frankly, that's kind of sad. It is kind of sad. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's a friendship that I used to prefer actually, mm. you know? And, uh, I think, um, yeah. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, we, we want to do what we want to do. Right. I so. I think it, it is a conscious decision to give people permission, mm. you know, like, Hey, like I, I want you to like help keep me true to my, you know, convictions. Cause yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think that's there's a lot of value in that. That, that is true. Mm. Because like otherwise, like who would tell you anything, you know? Your parents, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Well, who listens to their parents, right? Like, I mean, I think most people could say these days that their parents don't really know them. Yeah, I think so. I think that's more and more true. I mm. think people would say now that most people don't know. Them. Yeah, but I think it's a like a pretty awesome thing to see relationships, like friendships specifically, friendships where like you know each other. I think mm. we see that even in, in like you know TV shows and like cartoons and. It's like, man, that's like awesome that you're like, they know each other. That's, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Um, There's beauty in that. Yeah. I think another relationship there that's really important is to have older people. Like we talked about older people earlier, like older people that you give permission to, to kind of tell you how to live life hmm. because like they actually know better than you. <laughs> yeah. They did it. I mean, hopefully, right? Yeah. Chances are. Right. So. Like if you look in the past, right? Yeah. Most people did not go to school. I'm talking about like early, okay, early yeah, yeah, on, yeah. right? Like hundreds of years ago, people didn't go to school. Back when the school. universities were for the very privileged and for people who just looked at books all day, kind of thing. Right? Yeah. So they, back then they had the apprenticeship model, which is you you would go find a dude who's been doing his blacksmithing thing for like 50 years now, and you're like, teach me. Yeah. You know. Sensei, Shifu, teach me, or something like that, you know? Yeah. And they're like, okay, I'm gonna teach you. It's gonna be tough, you know? And yeah, yeah. You're gonna hate it. And you're like, I gotta learn. I, I gotta live, that kind of thing, right? So he teaches you for the next like 20 years. Yeah. And he just tells you what to do all the time. That sounds he, miserable. You might hate it because he's like on your back about everything. You're holding the hammer wrong. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. hitting the thing wrong. Yep. Your timing's wrong. Your timing's wrong. And it sucks to hear that because you're like, Dang it, <laughs> he's right. Yeah, 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 you know. But then, in the end, you become the blacksmith. Mm. You're you become the blacksmith, and he, you know, I don't know what happened to him. He retires or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But same thing with Christians, with Christianity. Like, if you look at the relationships between the different people described in like you know, the Old New Testament, right? You have Paul and his disciple dude Timothy, and he would tell Timothy what to do all the time. Like, we have two letters. Yeah, to like Timothy about that. And Timothy just takes it because he knows that that's going to make him a better Christian. Right. Right. So in the same context, like same way, like if you don't find someone who's older than you, mm. who's, well, of course, he has to be a better Christian than you. Mm. And you tell, you give him the permission to kind of speak into your life and tell you the things you don't want to hear. Yeah. Because I guess even your friends sometimes just tell you the things you want to hear. Right. Then I, I don't think you're going to grow. Mm. Yeah. You know, I is so we talked a, a little bit like how accountability is good because it right. allows people to tell you things that you can't see yourself, or yeah, maybe that not even so much that you can't see, but yep. your self will is it's hard to overcome yourself, right? It's, like it's true. Self denial is very difficult. So whether it be from ignorance or just struggling with self denial, yeah. it's good to have that corrective kind of mm. action because it's easier. Right. I mean, and you, I mean just human nature right it's easy for us to identify the flaws in others sometimes yeah than it is in ourselves so absolutely well uh, yeah i know that <laughs> bro you're, you're laundry dude i don't know right <laughs> I'm just no man that, that's a that's a, <laughs> yeah, a sore yeah. subject but, yeah. yeah okay but um yeah is there other aspects though mm. of christian community especially among friends like people yeah. of similar maturity and age yeah that helps you maintain that foundation of christianity in your life mm. you know i i don't know like um like maybe like i'm thinking maybe like what what's the mentality maybe of like the lone ranger maybe like oh I kind see. of a counterpoint or a, a, a contrary view to kind of you're you're saying like or asking like the guy who like kind of lives christianity out on his own kind of thing yeah like what is he I don't, for lack of a better word, like what's his internal reality? Yeah, I see. That's a good question. I think, hmm, uh, maybe like he is afraid of failure. Hmm. Because if he he knows that if, like, if he commits to something, like commits to actually getting deep of like people 
and having them speak in his life, like he will fail. Yeah. You know, and he's afraid of that. Mm. Um, but I think failure is okay in our context because like, it's like, it's like salmon going up a river, right? You know, if you don't keep trying, if you don't like actually keep swimming, right. then you're going to go back. That's true. Um, it's like, like everything that's living in our world has to keep growing. You know, like if it doesn't grow, then it's dead. Mm. I think that's true for most things. Probably, I can't think of an example of that. Yeah. It's not true. But there is, there might be a desire to grow, sure, in this kind of lone Christian. Right. But it's not actionable, mm. I suppose. And, and because it's not actionable, he is stagnant. Well, actually, there is no such thing as stagnating in this, in this model. Mm. Because, yeah, like it's, like you either grow or you die. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, engineers talk about this. Um, there's something called stable systems and unstable systems, you know, and unstable systems, they're, they're unstable because they're either going one way or the other, you know, they're, yeah, yeah. they're never, uh, you know, there's an infinitesimally small chance that it's actually instability. It's kind of like, that's a word, it, infinitesimally. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, technically it could happen, but yeah. It's like, it's like if you're balancing a marble on a knife's edge, that's an unstable system because mm. pretty much the, the marble's going to fall one way or the other. Right. You know what I mean? It's not a stable system. So, yeah, well, uh, yeah, our lives are unstable in, that, in some that sense. That occurs to me that relationships in general are unstable systems. Kind of, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if you haven't seen a friend forever in like 10 years, like there's no chance that you guys are like the same as you were. Like, yeah. As you, even like a year, like. There's no, yeah, there's something about relationships like there's no such thing as stagnating. It's kind of like you either get closer or you kind of fall away, mm. fall apart from each other. Um, I think our relationship with Jesus is is exemplary of that, or not exemplary. It's a, a good example of that because mm. it's like yeah, like if you don't continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus, then you're gonna die. Right. Or you're gonna, and then, well, you know, to be more nuanced about that. Like, you can be a kind of Christian who is completely ineffective, who does not feel any sort of joy. Mm. You know, perhaps they're still safe. I don't know. I'm not going to go into that kind of thing right now. Right. But it's like, I'm just imagining a guy who's just kind of like, yeah, sure, they're Christians. But then, like, they have, mm. they're just, what are they doing with their life? I don't think they're doing anything right now. Yeah. We talked um, before about kind of the inspiring vision that we saw in kind of these older brothers, mm. you know? who out of college kind of were living a life that was attractive. Yeah. And I don't think their lives would have been attractive if they kind of had the same mentality that you're describing. I you think know? so. Yeah. There's something about that. So, mm. but then from their angle, I think what was important is the, is the kind of like relationship downwards, I guess, lack of a better word. Like yeah, yeah. they are mentoring us, but I think that's important for them too, because it's like, Hmm. sure like you can have a really good community you can always be told to do but eventually at some point as the master blacksmith hmm. you have to pass it on you know it's right. like um because you're able to teach somebody else about it hmm. then inherently you're going to grow right even, even more or you're going to grow in different ways in in mastery i think yeah um i don't know is there is there a good example of that can you think of well, like an example of like you have to pass it on kind of thing, or, or... like what benefit? What? How do you benefit from passing on? Mm. Or like in your case, as right because we're both college ministers. Yeah. So, basically, that's a fancy word of saying basically we mentor college dudes, right? Mm. So, what is the benefit of spending the time and effort to mentor a younger guy? Well, um, I'll just use an example that isn't strictly Christian life, sure. but back in college, yeah. um, I found that I grew a lot in understanding of a subject when I taught it to someone else. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I might kind of understand something and some, you know, if a classmate I was really struggling, I did actually enjoy teaching people. Mm -hmm. um, so when people asked me, you know, I was like, all right, let's do this. And then, you know, but I find that when I'm explaining concepts and, um, you know, things to other people, it reveals areas that I don't really understand mm. because when you, you know, Albert Einstein has a great quote. He said, if you can't explain something simply, right. then you don't understand it fully. 
and i find that very insightful um actually um so yeah of course through through teaching you know subject matter i i actually learned what i was weak on and i you know i i took the time to correct it and it really helped my understanding but even in christian life i observed that because um you know, we've done, we've done exercises where it's like, oh, you know, yeah, explain yeah. the gospel in, in 30 seconds. Right, right. Just the basic gospel. And it's weird. The first time we did that, I was struggling, man. My, my answer yeah. was really complicated. Yep. And you know what? I don't think I really understood the gospel because I, couldn't, time, I yeah. couldn't explain it fully. Yeah. And I find that uh, through trying to teach the gospel, um, it has enriched and made me understand it more mm. i think the more we understand it like intuitively and yeah. kind of thoroughly yeah. um the more it kind of um kind of resonates i guess in our in our hearts because we don't if we have if there's some spots that are kind of you know shady you know mm. it, it it has a harder time really affecting how we think i guess day to day yeah so th- i mean j- that's one example I, I could think of that's a good example yeah, yeah i think that's really true like Actually, well, if I could share an example too. Yeah, like yeah. One of the dudes was asking me, like, how do you pray? Okay. Yeah. And, like, well, I don't know. You just kind of close your eyes and yeah, yeah, yeah. talk about things that you kind of want. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. But then it's like, well, that forced me to think about, like, okay, well, how do I, how do I teach a guy who's never really prayed before? Like, how do I, how to pray? You know, and we, I went for a different models with him, try to talk to him about, like, my experience with it, ask different people. But that forced me to, to grow like to grow my understanding about that so that i could teach somebody else about it and benefit that guy Hmm. it's a completely other centered endeavor even though you yourself grow i think but it's like entirely for the sake of this guy who can't really like benefit you in any way you know and i think that's that is kind of like a core thing about Christianity, right? It's like, mm. about, it's about other people. It's about loving other people. Mm. Why not start with the people around you? Like the older people who speak into your life, the younger people who you speak into their lives. Yeah. And then the guys around you. Yeah. yeah. Who you are speaking to each other's lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a little cross. It's like actually like a little cross. That's pretty oh, cool. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Vertically, like Vertically. up and down. Yeah, yeah. And then horizontally. Yeah. With with peers, with people who know you and have the permission to speak into your life. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, it's just I think it's a shame then that we don't see that kind of playing out in people's lives these days. Hmm. Yeah, I think more and more we are seeing less people. We kind of talk. We kind of alluded to this in the beginning, but like people who cannot really say. That they have close friends, yeah, or close mentors, or people mm. that they're looking out for, right? Like, actually, I remember this was. I'm a little, you know, I'm I'm 24, so I don't really understand this the yeah. whole Instagram thing. We're still pretty young, right? Um, well, I just kind of lived under a rock. I don't know, but then like he was, I asked him like, "Hey, man, like, who are your friends? Who are your close friends?" Yeah, and he was like, "Oh yeah, uh, let me show you." Like, he pulls up his Instagram thing, and then it says who your close friends are because okay. it's the people who respond most to your stuff, right? But then the fact that he had instagram show me i guess like who his close friends are i don't know to me that that felt kind of impersonal and kind of i guess sad you know yeah but yeah that's just it that's just something that i was thinking about um yeah okay well we talked for quite a long time but i think we covered the main points yep. so i guess to sum up how do you stay a christian in college is to be a part of community a church community, right? And like, what does that community look like? It looks like having mentors, having mentees, people you're mentoring to, and people alongside you, like your yeah. close friends um, who are supporting you and you're supporting each other. And you're all, and this whole thing is all towards the same purpose. Um, and essentially, that is what a church is. Hmm. You know, it's not just going to watch the Sunday stream every Sunday or going to Friday Bible study every Friday. I thought I thought church was a building. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting the dictionary <laughs> response. No, church is a people. Church is Christians That's gathering. Right. You know, on mission. On yeah. mission to preach the gospel. Yeah. That's what that's what the church is. Um so yeah, I guess our group 
we go to X2 Fellowship at Cal Poly. Um, you know, I, I put the Instagram in the description below. I've always wanted to do that. The description below. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've when the box that. pops up. Yeah. Hit the subscribe button. Click the bell icon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you, I mean, if you're looking for a group, you're looking for that kind of community, that kind of place to grow and to live and to have people who, like, know you and you know people. Like, I think, you know, our, our group, I mean, that's one of a lot of different groups, but um, I like our group a lot. So, you can, that's yeah. one. Yeah. But I definitely encourage you guys, who, whoever's watching, I don't know. I, I'm not actually really looking at, looking at stats right now, but if you're watching this and you feel like you're alone right now and you're not growing, you're not mm -hmm. getting anywhere in life, yep. and you're thinking, like, you know, Christian life is really hard, yeah. I really encourage you to, you know, find a group of brothers or sisters, if you're a girl, you know, mm. to live out Christianity together. And that's mm. how you stay Christian in college. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah, we might do this again some other time, but that's it. That's it for now. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. End. All right.